Hola amigos, it's me Paul and I'm here in Bucerias, Nayarit, Mexico and today I'm going to share with you some tips and some best practices for driving your foreign plated vehicle into Mexico. Keep in mind that if you're driving your foreign plated car into Mexico, that means a car that's from the United States or Canada, you don't need to get a permit if you're staying within 21 kilometers from the border. But if you're going beyond that range, watch this video. Oh, it's getting bright. Watch this video and find out how you can drive your foreign plated car deep into the heart of Mexico. Vamanos. So first things first, should you even bring your car into Mexico in the first place? Now, coming from the US or Canada, many of us rely on our car as our main mode of transportation. So we might assume we need to take it with us, but not so fast. It's a good idea to consider if you'll actually need it while you're in Mexico, or if your car will become more of a burden than a benefit. If you're planning to live here in Mexico, I would say sell your US or Canadian car. Buy a Mexican car here in Mexico. Another aspect to this that you might consider is that many cities and towns in Mexico are very walkable and the public transportation is often good. You might not even really need a car where you're going to be living. Another thing to consider is the make and model of your vehicle. For example, if you're planning to bring your Volvo sedan from the US and live in Puerto Vallarta, understand that there are a lot of cobblestone roads, potholes, speed bumps, and after time, your sedan will need some repairs. But there isn't a Volvo mechanic in Puerto Vallarta, so you will need to get it towed to a mechanic in Guadalajara for repairs. This will become quite the headache, so consider the conditions of the road where you're going to be mostly driving, and whether or not there's going to be mechanics for your particular vehicle. So who can actually bring their car into Mexico? The way I see it is that your car is attached to whatever visa you have. So if you're coming on the standard tourist visa, then your vehicle is attached to that visa, and you can drive here in your foreign plated vehicle for 180 days. Temporary visa people can have their car with them as long as they have their temporary visa. Permanent residency people can only bring a car into the 21 kilometer range within the border of Mexico. There's no temporary import permitted for them. They will need to go through the process of legally importing a car into Mexico. And that can be expensive and difficult, probably not worth it. So if you're somebody that has a temporary visa and you're going to get your permanent residency, you'll need to take your car out of the country before you get your permanent residency. So now that we've covered that, you decided you're ready to bring your vehicle into Mexico. What's next? The first thing you should do is organize your documents. Get yourself a binder for keeping all of the documents together in one place. No need to be at the border digging through the glove box, searching for the registration, and realizing it's not there or not up to date. Another thing you might consider doing is making copies of all your documents and uploading them to something like Google Drive or Dropbox. That way, if you lose anything or you need to make more copies of something, you'll have access to it wherever you are. Here's a checklist for the items that you will need. A passport, a driver's license, proof of car registration, and this needs to be current. And also, if this is not your car, you're going to need written permission from the actual owner of the car, and you'll present that to the officials a temporary vehicle importation permit, your visitor's permit, which for most people is the 180-day tourist visa, a Mexican tourist auto insurance policy, the original and a photocopy of the title. Something to keep in mind is that if the title or registration is in the name of the spouse, a marriage certificate must be presented. For Mexican tourist car insurance, I used a company called Sanborns, and you can buy this online and print out the policy and shove it into that binder with a few copies. You can also buy insurance near the border, but I think it's a lot easier just to do it online. Once you're at the border and receive your FMM, which is your visa, you will get your passport stamped. You will then need to obtain the TIP, which is your temporary import permit. 
This is the permit that allows you to drive your foreign-plated vehicle into the interior parts of Mexico. You can get this at the nearest Banjercito, or you can get it online 7 to 60 days prior to the day you cross the border. Keep in mind that either way, you will need to visit the Banjercito in person because you will need to pay the $200 deposit to drive your car into Mexico. You will get the $200 back as long as you bring your car out of Mexico in the time that it is permitted. Remember to stop at the Banjercito on the way out of Mexico so you can collect your $200 refund. If you leave without stopping, that $200 will disappear forever. So what happens if you decide that you're gonna forego getting the proper permit and you drive your car without the permit deep into Mexico? Well, without the proper permit, you could be incarcerated, fined, and or have your vehicle seized at the immigration or customs checkpoints. So I don't recommend doing that. So now with your permit, you are free to drive into this beautiful country. I'll share driving tips in a future video. Another great tip for those who are making this journey is to join a Facebook group called On the Road in Mexico. There's a ton of info on this page and there's just a lot of people that have made this journey. And so you can ask people who have already done it your specific questions. And for more information about border crossings and just about everything you need to know about moving and living in Mexico, you can pick up the Mexico Relocation Guide. It's got everything you need to know about moving to or living in Mexico. Follow the link in the description to receive your copy. Safety. If you watched my previous video where I let a scammer into my truck, you'll know that the border is, is somewhere you should be very careful with how you conduct yourself. While doing some research for this video, I learned that the third most common crime in Mexico is something called virtual kidnapping. Criminals use a variety of tactics to gather information about potential victims for extortion purposes, including using social media sites or even just eavesdropping on conversations. So be very careful with what information you share with the world, either virtually or in person. Be discreet and keep a low profile. 99% of the time, you will make this trip without any major issues. Traveling by car into Mexico is an amazing experience and a great way to see this beautiful country. What are your tips for driving into Mexico? Comment below with any additional tips or information that will be helpful. Something else that I wanted to add to this video is that you should do more research than just watching this particular video. Uh, find out more information about your specific situation and make sure that you got everything you need for crossing the border and bringing your foreign plated vehicle into Mexico. I hope this video was helpful for those looking to cross the border with their foreign plated vehicle. Best of luck to you on your journey. De mi familia a la tuya, Dios te bendiga.